but but that's part of the paradox of this age of the church. People are reading the scriptures, but they're not reading the scriptures Christocentrically, so they are actually finding affirmations for the subjective yeah, yeah. from the scriptures. Oh, good grief. That's what the, the, the difference between Joel Osteen and a T.D. Jakes is not so much the message or even the manner in which they present the message. The difference is this. For the most part, Osteen doesn't try to open up the scriptures and explain them. He will cite it, and then he'll just go on and give his little pep talk. Uh, a guy like T.D. Jakes becomes more dangerous because, and, and this is the same, the same is true with a lot of the other, what we would used to call the word faith teachers. They are actually expounding the yep. scriptures. Yep. They are opening, not properly, but just in the, the, the raw, Listen. naked definition of the term exposition, yes. they are explaining Verse by doctrines. verse. Yes. yes. We've, we've had uh, Christian Smith on the program before, the Notre Dame sociologist who completed that wonderful exploration into the spirituality of America's teens, uh, in which he makes this case that he found it astonishing the extent, to, he knew it was a problem already, but the extent to which many of the uh, young people he interviewed said that they had a vital, important relationship with Christ, and it was at the at the center of who they were, and they could not form an intelligent sentence about who Jesus was or what he did. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, wow. we talk about a faith that is passed down from generation to generation. I will be a God to you and to your children after you, a covenantal faith. How can that faith be passed down? Unless it is actually taught. Sure. Uh, yeah. One of the one of the little books I have my students read, very small, John Stott, Your Mind Matters, mm. and it's simply a study of the New Testament picture of the mind. And I have them read that because I said if you're going to be doing apologetics, you will not be getting resistance from the unbeliever. He'll be curious that anybody has an argument at all in behalf of the gospel being true. But you'll catch all sorts of flack from your church members yeah, who will yeah. say, I think probably that that really isn't very spiritual. Hmm. Because faith is the opposite of knowledge. Yep. Y- you are the living gospel. Yeah. <sighs> Here are some passages. Hosea 4, six. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. De- Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6. Yeah, 6. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them teach diligently them. to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. In the Bible, head and heart are really this, they're interchangeable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're if we could just get that one yeah. thing across... The distinction or schism between them comes from enthusiastic revivalism, yeah. right? Yeah. No compartmentalization in those two categories in the New Testament. No. Today, a lot of people say, it's all about discipleship, not doctrine. Here's John 8:31. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. In John, <laughs> when he talks about fruit, the context of that, at least in that gospel, the context of that is a disciple is not above his master. In other words, it has to do with cognitive content yeah. and faithfully delivering what the master taught you to teach and don't change a thing. The, it is not moral in John's gospel. It's primarily cognitive. And by the way, they are called disciples, which means yeah. learners. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and the Great Commission, Matthew 28, go in the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name mm-hmm. of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And doing what? Teaching, Teaching them everything. everything I've commanded The them? moment you say it's about following Jesus, not about doctrine... It begs the question, who is Jesus? Are, yep. you, are you a mindless follower of some first century Jewish rabbi? Right. Or are you actually following someone about whom you know something yeah. and whose right. credentials you've examined? You've examined. Yeah. Yep. I, I talk to more and more people outside church context who are just dumbfounded when you make the basic point to them that Christianity is a truth claim. Yeah. yeah. They look at you like, wait a minute, this person's rational. Yeah. Why are they saying that? If yeah. you're rational, you gotta, this, doesn't, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Got a BB loose in the can. Yeah. Way back before he was well-known, way back when, Fran Schaefer yeah. spoke here in Mission Bay, and there were youth leaders there from all over the country. And if I remember nothing else from that, 
It was a plea on Schaefer's part to the youth leaders of the top churches in America. He said, if I can plead with you one thing, it is this. When you present the gospel to your kids, present it, the gospel, first of all, is true, not helpful. Yes. That was 30 and that, years ago. And yes. that's why people were coming from, young people were coming from Harvard and Yale and Berkeley, yeah, flocking. flocking to Labrie instead of asking their pastors and their parents, yep. flocking to Labrie because Francis Schaeffer was actually addressing their questions and regarded Christianity as living or dying on the hill of truth. Right. Not well, Is it helpful? Right. Not yep. it, right. you know. Christianity is first and foremost a body of truth that is to be believed. Absolutely. Right. And once, if that truth is believed, it will manifest itself in a mode of behavior, but that's not where you begin. Good for you, yep. especially in Baptist circles. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, Jesus said you make the right tree and it'll bear the right, right fruit. fruit. Exactly. You, don't, yeah. you don't start no. with the fruit. No. Um, the way that, that the apostles in the New Testament epistles especially contrast maturity with naivete in the way that we're talking about thoughtfulness versus ignorance. Now, it's not the whole of the Christian life. Right. It's not just about right. thinking. Maturity right. is not just an intellectual head trip. And right. by the way, that's mm. the misconception that people have when we talk in, in, in this way. They, they hear one thing. They hear us saying that it's all about the mind. And nothing no. else. And nothing right. else. No, but it, we're saying it can't be maturity in the biblical sense unless it includes the mind. Not absolutely. just includes the mind, but unless... It starts with the mind. Yep. We're, we're, we're first of all thrown off of our horse because the thought that I'm the center of the universe is judged wrong yep. and God is the center of the universe is judged right, how, how does that come to be? God has proved it by raising Jesus of Nazareth yeah. from the dead. Somebody outside of me is speaking to me. Yeah. Yes. And that voice outside of me is either true or false. For Madonna, Black Eyed Peas, all those folks... Mm -hmm. It's the voice within. Yeah. Well, that's and, the and that's why the, the, the call for stupidity is another claim for liberty or, or autonomy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's them yeah. not wanting to be bound by the, the traditions or the definitions of someone else. Mm -hmm. So let's get stupid and jettison any uh, anyone that would, would uh, make any claims, any authoritative claims on what I am to do or what I'm to believe. Or what any are, limits I'm to place on myself. Here, here are some uh, characteristic claims from the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians 10. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments hmm. and every pretension that sets itself, itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That sounds like an wow. intellectual head trip to a lot of people today, but that's Boy, what that's, Paul said it's all about. That's a different concept of spiritual warfare. It's yeah. not quite the same right. as casting out the demon of cancer or the demon of poverty, is it? Exactly. It's, it takes a little bit more work. Or Colossians 3.16, which tells us that the goal of singing in church is not to express right. yourself <laughs> and to show everyone else how pious you are. Rather, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Paul says, teaching and yep. admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Remember, Rob?